Hello, welcome. Pastor John here. And we are continuing on today in our series. I'm not going to always repeat it the same, but it is our ongoing Bible series. And uh, going through all the books of the Bible. And uh, I hope you're ex as excited as I am here. And we're looking at different um, uh, text passages. Today we're going to be looking at the book of First Kings. So it's also known as One Kings or First Kings. So open your Bible and please open your Bible and turn to First Kings 19, 1 to 18. So these are, this is in the Old Testament. And we're going to be reading One Kings, First Kings, chapter 19, verses 1 to 18. When Ahab got home, he told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, including the way he had killed all the prophets of Baal. So Jezebel sent this message to Elijah. May the gods strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you killed them. Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Beersheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servant there. Then he went on alone into the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, for I'm no better than my ancestors who have already died. Then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. But as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and told him, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there beside his head was some baked bread baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again and touched him and said, Get up and eat some more, or the journey ahead will be too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank, and the food gave him enough strength to travel forty days and forty nights to Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. There he came to a cave where he spent the night. But the Lord said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah replied, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken the covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by, and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was the sound of a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And a voice said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied again, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. And the Lord told him, Go back the same way you came and travel to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive there, anoint Hazael to be king of Aram. Then anoint Jehu, grandson of Nimshi, to be king of Israel, <clears throat> and anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from the town of Abel Meholah, to replace you as my prophet. Anyone who escapes from Hazael will be killed by Jehu, and those who escape Jehu will be killed by Elisha. Yet, I will preserve 7,000 others in Israel 
who have never bowed down to Baal or kissed him. God bless reading of his word. So that was 1 Kings chapter 19, 1 to 18. You are not alone. You are not alone. Well, the background here, this passage here is, um, again, we're in, uh, still in the historical books in 1 Kings. And it starts, First Kings begins with the reign of Solomon, King Solomon. Uh, it covers the range from uh, King David's death, uh, that's around about 970 BC, to the Babylonian exile of Judah, right? The Israelites were exiled in 586 BC by the Babylonians. So um, our text selection today is recorded during the time of King Ahab's reign in Israel. So those were pretty dark times, and uh, um, King Ahab was an evil king. Um, uh, among the well, how evil can it get? But very evil, and uh, we learn more about his wife Jezebel. We'll talk about that in one sec. But um, it's basically here um, the uh, events recorded here uh, during King Ahab's reign. So. Um, what happens here previously, before this passage we just read, and I encourage you to read 1 Kings 18, 1 Kings 19, and onward. Uh, read the entire book, God willing, that would be the very best. But um, what happens is there's the, um, the contest that God wins um, on Mount Carmel, right? Where um, Elijah, um, God works through Elijah, uh, uses him as broken vessel uh, for his heavenly kingdom, and he wins the contest against uh, the so-called Baal, uh, God Baal, and the Baal prophets. So that's in one one Kings chapter eighteen, one to forty. Read it. It is it is one event, especially in the Old Testament, you do not want to miss. All right. So that's what precedes this. So um, Elijah has the victory, but. After this victory, um, Ahab's wife, Jezebel, um, she's of pagan origin, she's a Phoenician, um, and she's that. so she's involved in all kinds of sorcery, witchcraft, divination, all kind of evil, worshipping anything uh, but God, but Yahweh God. And so she continues to promote Baal worship and evil. So uh, she threatens to kill Elijah, as we just read, and that's a real threat. Um, Elijah um, um, has to flee for his life. He's not a coward or anything, but he's um, wise in the sense that he does, um, you know, distance himself from the evil because um, under the uh, uh, kingship of Ahab and with his wife, they killed um, um, uh, many prophets. Um, Elijah thinks they have killed all, all of God's prophets, but we'll see if that's true or not. So, um, Eli Elijah does the right thing, and he has to flee for his life. Um, so that's the context, he flees, Elijah the prophet flees, and he feels alone, right? So one of the things we may want to consider is, so all the evil prophets of Baal are defeated in the previous chapter, right? I hope you will read it. But the evil rulers are still there, King Ahab and Jezebel and uh, whoever else, the associates are still there. So the threat still remains. So why did God not remove them just as he had removed the false prophets, right? As Elijah wins the contest on, on Mount Carmel. The Bible doesn't tell us. We don't know. Um, but leaving that open, the topic is we ask when we read all this, um, why, why did God not deal with the evil, right? And we ask, um, like Elijah uh, does, God, have you forgotten about me? God, have you forgotten about me? So the truth we are exploring here is that God um, is looking after his own, that is all of us believers uh, in Christ, uh, followers of Jesus, and basically, the message is we are not alone. You are not alone. With God, 
we are not alone. So let's just briefly look at some of the verses very briefly. So verses 1 to 2, it's a serious threat, a real threat, and Elijah has to respond. So um, God is quiet at the time, as we read in verse 3. So Elijah is uncertain, afraid, and discouraged now. Um, verse 8 um, moves on to uh, Mount Horeb is another name for Mount Sinai. So Mount Horeb is just another name for Mount Sinai. And in verse 11 to 12, we learn more about God's quiet voice. As you, as we just read, right? There's an earthquake, um, there's, a, there's a wind blast, earthquake, fire. But God is not in, in, in all those. But uh, God's quiet voice is like a, is a whisper. And that applies to us as well. So we have to be still as well to hear God's voice. And he, the prophet Isaiah reminds us of this in Isaiah 43, 19. For I'm about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. God bless you, his word. So in other words, um, even though God does not always appear to be there, he's still there. Um, and he does, you know, things, he changes things and... Uh, we not be made to be aware of it, or there may even be a real physical threat as it is here to our lives. And well, then we will we'll have to do, as long as the threat remains, we have to do social distancing at the very least, right? To stay away um, from the evil. And um, so that's what Elijah does here. However, in verses 15 to 18, we learn that God listens, right? God, God hears. Uh, Elijah's cry, he listens, he answers, and he gives exact instructions. So the main message here is God saying to Elijah, uh, God is saying in his own way, you are not alone. Right? So he also points out that there's a remnant, there's 7,000 who have never uh, been involved in Baal worship, that's idol worship, and there was like, um, you know, terrible human sacrifice and um, people worshipping um, basically a stick on a pole really at the end of the day um, but the truth is, is, is the devil Satan is behind all of that so Baal is just a different one of Satan and uh, the demonic realm and um, people worshipping Satan instead of God and even in, in some cases unfortunately um, uh, you know sacrificing you know their own own children um uh, in the fire, as an example, and there's another deity called Molech, um, which is also related to that. But the point is here is that um, Elijah um, turns to God and um, calls out to him, calls out, cries out, "Abba, Father, um, please take me home. I I don't know what to do. I'm at a loss." And God is saying, "You are not alone." So how can you apply the truth that God is with you as as Christian, right? So this applies only to believers, people who are followers of Jesus and Jesus Christ only. Um, and so th this is something to consider too. So how does it apply to you? So when you feel alone, you can you can and have to call out to Jesus. Psalm thirty four seventeen reminds us. The Lord hears his people when they call out, call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. I'll read that again. The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. God bless the reading of his word. And when you are persecuted, which which you know is a common experience for us as believers, as Christians. Um, persecution expresses itself, manifests itself in many different ways. And the Holy Spirit will guide you and lead you, and especially God's Word, to help you discern um, different forms of persecution. But be encouraged here as we uh, read in Matthew chapter 5, um, verses 11 and 12. Jesus tells us, God blesses you when people mock you 
and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. So there you go. God bless you, my word. That's from our Lord Jesus himself for encouragement. So um, we're even blessed when we are mocked and persecuted. Um, we don't like to be, but um, Jesus tells us that's the truth. So um, that's another thing to consider, um, that, as we, that we're not alone. With God, we're never alone. So when you don't know um, what to do, or you're at a loss, and, and all of us believers, and you, me, all of us, we have moments like that, um, especially in times of crisis, or maybe there's an uncontained health crisis, and um, that's going on, or a war, or uh, a famine, or whatever, like um, things like that, and that there's an ongoing process, and it has not been addressed, and it's still not completed, and so um, there we want to stay close to God's truth and his faithful promise. Um, that's in word and in prayer. So in the Bible, an open Bible is the best Bible, and in prayer. So Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, reminds us in Isaiah 41, verse 10, Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. God bless you of this word. So to sum it up, as follower of Christ, you are never alone. You are never alone. God is with you. It may not look that way. It may not feel that way. And it may even not be that way, uh, humanly speaking, as we just saw in the example with the prophet Elijah. But... The Bible promises you, or God's word promises you, so we read Deuteronomy 31.6, so be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them, for the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. God bless you of this word. That is God's promise to you, as believer in Christ Jesus, no matter what happens. And um, may God bless you and keep you. Amen.